today there is priest recollection and for this we have invited archbishop emeritus of visakhapatnam most reverend dr mallavarapu prakash he has come here yesterday itself and we respectfully and cordially invite him for this recollection we invite most reverend dr mallavar prakash on to the stage today's our beloved bishops as it is two anniversaries on behalf of the clergy and religious cordially invite our bishop to come on to the stage <clears throat> offer a bouquet to archbishop our beloved vicar general monsignor balapushparav will give the bouquet kindly be seated for a small introduction on our beloved archbishop our recollection preacher most reverend mallavarapu prakash is a indian prelate of the catholic church and current emeritus archbishop of visakhapatnam here are some key highlights of his career born january 29th 1949 in jadi jamalpur nizamabad hyderabad diocese ordained priest october 11 1979 appointed bishop of kadapa may 22 1998 transfer to vijayawada july 26 2002 appointed archbishop of visakhapatnam july 3 2012 installed as archbishop on september 23 2012 he has also served as the chairman of the andhra pradesh bishops council and the president of regional bishops conference of andhra and telangana he has been involved in various social and educational initiatives and has played a key role in promoting interfaith dialogue and harmony early life born in a farming family he was the youngest of five children his parents were devout catholics who instilled in him a strong faith foundation education he studied at st john's high school nizamabad and later st francis xavier minor seminary hyderabad he pursued philosophy and theology at st john's regional seminary hyderabad is a episcopal ministry as bishop of kadapa he focused on evangelization social justice interfaith dialogue he established several schools hospitals and social service centers as archbishop of visakhapatnam he has continued to prioritize education health care and social welfare he has also emphasized the importance of environmental protection and has initiated several eco friendly projects community engagement he has been involved in various community development programs including disaster relief efforts and initiatives promoting Dal dalit empowerment he has received several awards for his contribution to education health care and social service and it is a great privilege and honor for all of us that today 
Archbishop Hemeritis is present here and we shall listen to his golden words and also a message that comes across his wonderful experience. Thank you, dear fathers and sisters. Basically, pilgrimage would mean initiative by the pilgrim, setting up a goal of the pilgrimage of a shrine or a temple or a holy place or a destiny somewhere. And he or she starts with that intention of reaching there. And already starting itself, there is a sense of joy setting on the pilgrimage. And that joy, the pilgrim expects, will be complete when he or she reaches the destiny or the goal or the place or the where the pilgrim intends to reach. This is what we know. And it is a holy intention, it is a spiritual intention. It is for the overall well-being of the life of the pilgrim that the pilgrim undertakes this pilgrimage. And it is a journey. And on the journey, not everything goes perhaps well, there can be ups and downs. And there are sometimes instances where the pilgrims die on the way before they reach the particular place or the shrine or the holy place. Things happen on the way. But the expectation is, the enthusiasm in the pilgrim is, with the energy that he kind of gathers every day during the pilgrimage enthuses him to keep going. There is some joy inside, there is some energy inside, a spiritual energy that makes him go or makes her go. This is what we know. And when the pilgrim reaches the place or the temple or the shrine or the goal, he is very happy. That is expectation the joy of reaching the goal is full. And with that joy he returns and shares with his family and friends when he comes back home after the pilgrimage. Now why I am placing this before you are the call of the church in the Jubilee year 2025 with the preparation already for the last three years that each of us are invited to think of ourselves as pilgrims of hope. With that theme, we are on the journey. As now, nothing new here. We call the church on earth, besides the glorified church of saints and the suffering church in purgatory, we are pilgrim church. We are initiated into Christian life and into that new life with Christ through baptism. And the culmination of this new life is reaching the everlasting life which we confess every day in our creed. I believe in the everlasting life. I believe in the eternal life. I believe in the resurrection of the dead. And with that faith, with that hope, we are supposed to be on the journey as Christian believers and that's why we are called as a church, pilgrim church. And each of us are on a pilgrimage. Our destiny, reaching the, the fullness of joy, the beatific vision of the Lord and the final kind of communion, total communion with God in Jesus Christ, through Jesus Christ, one day at the end of this journey. And therefore, the Holy Father rightly thought the theme for this Jubilee year should be church members as pilgrims of hope. Pilgrims of hope. So this is the general background. I, the, uh, the document uh, uh, for Pope has uh, uh, kind of, uh, uh, given to the Universal Church 
addressing, he says, I read that, Francis, Pope of Rome, servant of the servants of God, to all who read this letter, may hope fill your hearts. May hope fill your hearts. You are Christians, members of the church, believers in Christ Jesus, the Savior in whom you have received new life. And this preparation day will fill you greater sense of hope because you have to keep journeying as individuals, members in the church and as a church together, as a community. Hope this will, that is what his intention is. Now, I took most of, the, I read this letter a couple of times and noted main points. Uh, this is already on 16, 17 pages. And along with this, I also read, uh, prepared my reflections. Pope Francis has given, in the month of May, a letter addressed to the parish priests. And I'm sure it is circulated among the clergy in the diocese as well. Addressing the parish priests. And he is, uh, as a father to his sons, to his children, to his collaborators, he is addressing the parish priests about how each parish priest is in charge of the church in miniature, local church in the parish, entrusted to his care. And what perspective should he have? What disposition should he have? What kind of availability he should have? and what kind of communion he should have with the members of the church in the local church, the parish community. And how do you go along with them? How you take, not taking, right, walking in the front always, or uh, standing behind and uh, uh, driving them, with them, along with them, accompanying them. And he gives nice uh, reflections, inviting the parish priests. What the universal church, a uh, diocese bishop in a ch local church, Pope Francis and the universal church, in the local church in the parish, it is the parish priest, the head of the community there. And therefore, this jubilee year, jubilee year, a renewal of the parish ministry of the parish priest, and the community of the parish together, walking forward, moving forward as pilgrims of hope, as pilgrims of hope. Christian faith is the foundation. Christian hope is the energizing force and power working in the hearts and minds of both the parish priest and the community. And then the march forward towards the goal to which the community, we are all in, uh, baptized and we are assured. And the uh, mechanism is, like what from the Old Testament onwards we know, God calls and promises. He makes promise, Abraham. He calls from his land, he promises to take him to a new place, he promises him that he would have offspring and great number of uh, his uh, posterity. He promises. Response from Abraham is, he believes this call, God calling him, and the promise God is making to him. And he follows with the hope and trust that the promise this God is making he will be faithful and it will be one day fulfilled. How long to wait, he doesn't know. How it will be fulfilled, when it will be fulfilled, he doesn't know. But this God who is calling and promising will certainly keep his promise. And a few times he may be out of waiting, impatience. Uh, still I don't have a child and you are saying my, uh, my posterity will be like uh, numberless stars in the sky and uh, countless grains of sea, sand on the seashore. But I don't have yet a child. You are talking about my posterity, my, my people after me. 
He says, Pakkal will come. You will come, you will get. And he waits in patience. And he endures in that patience. And after getting child, he was tested whether he is really believing and trusting, and trusting his life to this God. He asked him to, to sacrifice that child also. And Abraham, same faith, God is telling, he has a plan, he has an intention, and I will do. Why? I don't know. He is asking of me a big, a big sacrifice like this, but I will do. Because it's God who is do, saying this, I will do it. So this call, promise, and assurance of that fulfillment, so therefore waiting in hope, and that hope will be fulfilled, is the kind of confidence this believer has, and he waits. He waits. And that waiting, sometimes is challenging. How long to wait? How long to go? How long to go? We don't know. Similarly, we are all promised eternal life in Jesus Christ, into which we are initiated on the day of our baptism. We are blessed with the indwelling Holy Spirit, enabling us to call God Abba Father. Blessing, the privilege. And we are, we are given the promise that we will share the fullness of God's glory one day. Fullness of that glory, God, glory of God. For that promise is made in Jesus Christ. In Jesus Christ, who, has, who died, who rose, and who is there glorified and at the right hand of the Father. And we are all assured that in His glory, in the fullness of glory, all of us will share. That is the promise. And therefore, on the journey of life, already initiated into this life, in Jesus Christ, through Jesus Christ, waiting to fulfillment of that promise. When that promise will be fulfilled, how it will be fulfilled, I don't know, but it will be fulfilled. That I am assured. That will be certain. Uncertainty is about how and when. And I have to wait. That's why Paul says that faith, that waiting, in patience, makes you endure, endurance to persevere. And that perseverance will strengthen your determination, your character. You won't give up. You continue to pursue. And that character will help you, give you the patience you need in waiting. Because you know for certain that God's promise will certainly be fulfilled. So Holy Father is saying this is the basic Christian doctrine, Christian faith, the teaching from our childhood days to all of us who are baptized and members of the church, people of God. So in the Jubilee year he is inviting, let us renew this. Let us renew this, of, first of all our faith in this promise which, is, which will be fulfilled and we are assured in the risen Christ already by sharing his life at the, from baptism onwards, that will be fulfilled. We are assured. And with this assurance given, we are uh, on the journey, waiting for that. Now the challenge is, whether this waiting, this faith, and this hope of eternal glory, is affecting our life in the way we think about life here, in the way we prioritize, give priorities in our life because of this believing that our journey, we are on the journey. So this life is passing temporary. It will end somewhere, but that will not end. There I have to reach. So that faith, that hope makes me go through this journey, whether that is helping. Quality of our life quality of our life here, 
as believers, as baptized people who have this faith and hope and as uh, marching as the pilgrims, quality of our life, both in matters of values related to spiritual values, moral values, social values, and our way that we witness to this in the society where we are. Whether this faith, this hope with which we are supposed to be full and keep moving and our thoughts are influenced, our decisions are influenced, our way of life is influenced, our relationship are influenced with this faith, with this hope. So, when we are sitting like this on a day of recollection and the course of the one year that is ahead of us uh, to enter into Jubilee year, to celebrate the Jubilee year till the end of Jubilee year in December 2025, we all of us have to revisit our life. This is what the intention of the invitation for Francis giving to the church. We have to revisit our life again. With full consciousness, with full consciousness and preparedness that we are not just like anybody in this world. We are special. We are specially blessed. We are consecrated people. We are God, people of God, sharing the royal priesthood of Christ in his common priesthood, called to offer acceptable sacrifice to this God in and through Jesus Christ. That is our identity. That is our identity. Consciously keeping this identity, allowing that identity to impact on us, on our thoughts, on our way of life, on our way we decide things, on our way we look at each other, on the way we belong to this church, the believing community. So as priests and religious, we have to be in the forefront. That's why Pope Francis in this article says, you have to be tangible signs of hope. Tangible signs of hope, those in the community and also in the society. And where is the source of this hope? Jesus Christ, your baptism, your faith, your conviction about the eternal life, and your being a Christian is not just ordinary thing, that's how you would think. And therefore in that hope you are living and in that hope you give witness and others looking at you, looking at you, they also become inspired, they also be inspired and they can become also tangible signs of hope in the midst of this, so in the society, in the midst of all that is going on, the church has to be a sign of hope, each community should be a sign of hope, and each believer should be a sign of hope. And we as priests and religious, especially blessed within the church, we have an extra responsibility on our shoulders that we should be tangible signs of hope. But where do we show this tangible, uh, as, uh, show ourselves as tangible signs of hope? In our apostolate, in our ministry, in our presence, physical presence, as a community, as a religious community, as a priest in the parish, uh, living in the midst of people, in the parish community, our religious community, there I, there I have to be, we have to be, tangible signs of hope to the people inside the church and outside the church. Here, I would like a more challenging question I am placing. The Lord also used to ask this kind of questions to his disciples during his uh, formation of his disciples those three years. Every now and then some questions they used to place before them and uh, others also, but mainly his disciples. You know, he, is, he asked Martha, those who believe in me, though dies, will live. Your brother died, but if you believe in me, he will live. 
and I am the life and resurrection, resurrection and life. And he says to her, do you believe? Do you believe this? And she says, yes, I believe. Now, what we are saying in the Jubilee year about our identity, about the goal of our life as baptized members of the church and as a church, that we need to be pilgrims hoping and desiring and with certainty that you want to share the fullness of the glory of God one day and therefore we are marching forward that is the promise God has made fulfilled in Jesus Christ fulfillment for each one of us God is assuring us in Jesus Christ and therefore I am assured I am confident therefore with that now suppose today each of, you, each of us are asked, including me, do you believe this? How much do you believe? We all say in the creed, yes, we believe. How much do we believe? Is a question. When I give retreats, when I preach uh, on the theme faith to the clergy retreats, after my ordination as a bishop, I would have preached about 28 dioceses uh, mostly across the country, mostly in South India and up to Maharashtra, some dioceses. And one of the main themes I used to take in the beginning of the retreat is about faith. Faith. Faith not in the sense of confession of faith. I believe in God and so on. There is one, we have no problems. But faith in the sense of living with conviction. What I confess, I am living. That faith is influencing my thoughts, my thinking, my relationships, my every plan that I have. That is influencing me. Living faith. That we need to. And say, I ask the question, yes, we all believe. And when we say we believe, do you believe to that extent because of which, for the sake of which, for the sake of what you believe, you give up everything else. You put aside everything else because of your faith in this. This is a priority. Other things doesn't matter, don't matter. That's a challenge for us. And most of us, human as we are, we can be nervous to say yes because we are distracted. We are distracted. We get caught up. And why we know? We are handling, we are handling daily earthly realities. We are not evil, but we are handling earthly realities which come under bodily sphere of life. We are handling money, we are handling power, we are handling administration of big institutions. We are involved in projects. We are also tempted to compete with other secular bodies in the field of education, corporate sector. We want to be like that. In our way of life, we are constantly tempted by this market. And what all the market is placing before us every day, new, new things. And we are all tempted. Nothing wrong in possessing these. But they can interfere. They can interfere with our pilgrimage. They can interfere with our priorities. These are earthly realities. So, when you say, I believe, and I, with this hope and faith, I journey, how do you handle money? How do you look at money? How do you look at power? How do you look at relations with other people? How do you look at social distinctions of caste, language, region? How do you look at? Because you believe that you are a child of God, others are children of God, everybody is created in the image and likeness of God. This is what you say, I believe. But you look at people, so-and-so caste, so-and-so language, so-and-so region, 
friends of us and friends of group where is your faith do you believe what you are saying how much do you believe how much do you believe and this kind of depth we have to go into our lives to see where we stand when we say i believe none of us are unbelievers none of us are unbelievers but how completely we are a loving faith to make us think and act in different spheres of life we are involved in the same line i am putting the another question jesus used to ask his disciples do you understand what i am saying to you what i am preaching to you do you understand many times may very often they didn't understand they always uh, understood differently what he was saying or did not understand anything just the opposite way they are thinking he is thinking with those who follow me should give up life should lay down their life said and they are saying who is the greatest among them they are, they are discussing on the way and sons of jebedi they come to the lord and say in your kingdom we want to sit on your right and left they we want you to may promise that the lord is always asking them something else then he asked do you understand what you are saying are you prepared yeah we understand we prepared now about our discipleship about our life of faith about what we are saying we are believing and hoping our being pilgrims on the way leading a pilgrim church uh, helping the community as priests and religious where do we stand in our understanding of this and how much that understanding is enabling us to live our life certain quality certain quality and that's where the difference comes it makes a difference your quality of life your quality of your decisions your quality of your way of life comes from you your faith your understanding of a faith your understanding of the lord and his teachings and allowing those to enter into your life understanding means influence you that's the real understanding not just intellectual understanding understanding in the level of a loving that understanding to make me think differently he says others think that way this way you should not think that way he is telling the disciples but they were still thinking that way only as i said earlier when you are handling earthly realities because we are living in bodily sphere of life like anybody else we can be tempted influenced by those things much more than ideally speaking much more than our faith and hope and that when that happens our christian life will be nominal only our priestly life will be nominal or formal only quality will be different quality will be different and how can you and i be signs of hope signs of uh, examples models ideals for others do you understand and then another important question the lord used to ask only few times he asked us what do you want what are you seeking when we joined first the seminary early years of formation this question was helpful for us why you enter the seminary why you enter formation house why you want to become a priest why you want to become a religious what are you want and this passage of first disciples i will take and say what do you want what are you seeking this question is ever relevant today after 10 years of your priesthood myself as 45 years of priesthood the lord should be asking me and i should be reflecting and answering what are you seeking 
what do you want with what with that what do you want in mind you are functioning are you clear are you clear what you are seeking because you are in the midst of secular realities you are handling earthly realities in the midst of all the secular forces but there you are a priest a religious a bishop a lay christian what are you seeking what are you seeking because you are a christian who is a priest because you are a christian who is a religious you know the opening prayer of the final profession or uh, uh, perpetual profession of religious sisters also i think first profession is mentioned in the opening prayer that these have to be signs of eschatological life they are here through their vows of poverty chastity and uh, uh, obedience there are all these signs of the life to to come they are here but they are they are not here they are in the world but they are not in the world eschatology means the end the goal is there already in their life they are supposed to be reflecting this live for that live for that now not only religious every one of us every one of us has to be eschatological signs that we have something as a goal which is there alive in my mind and heart i want that can it fade away put in some sarlu it can fade away because epudu ostundo teliyedu atlu untundo teliyedu how is going to be that glory we don't know when that glory is going to come also i don't know i have to live i have to live and the kalam emo how long and meanwhile all kinds of things are falling on me they are challenges to persevere to endure to remain there not easy and sometimes we can be carried away but we have to say every day i am clear what i want what i am seeking from my life as a christian and from the lord from the church from my priesthood from my religious life what i am seeking i know and therefore my life is having impact of that on my life on my thinking on my way of life on my decisions makes me different than those who do not say this i am saying this i am religious i am saying this i am a priest those who do not say i am a religious i am a priest i am not like that. they should see the difference not because they should see the difference i live because i believe and i want i am different and people will notice when i am really different genuinely different one more question the lord asks because this is basic again more fundamental along with other things do you love do you love me peter was asked three times we know by then he knew peter really loves him they left everything and followed after the resurrection they they all came back and they he has to and he is telling them go and proclaim same disciples who abandoned him and now he gathers them and encourages them and he is telling them go and proclaim and at that stage the last stage before his ascension is asking peter in front of other apostles do you love me do you really love me so for us it is a very a question a poem, the words of the lord we are, we got used to these words hey i yeah, yeah i know i love no you say why should the lord ask again and again do you love i know i love god yeah but how this love how this love is being concretely expressed every day 
in a concrete life situations that you love god with all your heart with all your mind with all your strength and your neighbor as yourself i love i love but do you really love do we really love sometimes i say in the close conversations when people bring to my notice how we are struggling with the caste issues in the church i said uh, maybe deeply we are not christians yet whether it is language based or caste based or other regional based when we have difficulties one another one group is against another maybe we are not deeply at christians not yet we are placing caste instead of christ we are keeping language region instead of christ and therefore we judge each other relate each other on that basis who is mine who is not mine who is ours who is not ours where are you where am i where are we and you say you love the your god who died for us for you and you are preaching him proclaiming him and he is telling you greater love nobody has than than one laying down his life for his friend and i have laid my fr- my life for you i call you my friends not servants anymore and this is how i showed my love and do you love and how do you show how do we manifest is not lies when we say yes lord we love you is not lies we really we love the lord as i said about faith how much you love because this god this jesus christ this church your priesthood your religious life because of which this is a first priority other things don't matter or secondary they are not important this is important anything interfering with this i keep aside that is the height and the depth of love to which we are called to live Be difficult human as we are but not impossible that's where we have to take not impossible not impossible when we say oh, who can be like that who can be like that lord says such a ideal thing who can follow and be like that finished you don't want to even try the lord says god is not asking you what is impo- what is impossible you not ask you what is impossible but you have to keep trying when you say impossible you are almost giving up all of us have to say no it's possible i keep try i have not yet reached that uh, ideal stage but i want to reach it's possible and the lord is asking me come little by little little by little uh, step by step come try and he will be there we believe that with his holy spirit he'll be there and we believe that holy spirit will be there a gift is there so my dear fathers and sisters uh, this way enter into your life of faith your life of uh, priesthood and your religious life and relationship with the lord prompted by this faith which is common to all the christians no same faith you are sharing i am sharing and we are teachers of this faith to our own people and the proclamation of this faith to other people inviting them to come to the lord why you want others to come to the lord what what they should come and see somebody told me on one platform and i was giving a talk on mother teresa years ago in hyderabad uh, auditorium even osman university auditorium and i was in the same day rector middle of my talk one fellow got up and said you are saying all this as a priest in your church in your church are you united do you treat each other without caste feelings 
you have caste system in your church. Say it away. Interrupted my talk. I said, if you are interested, I can talk to you later. But he was insisting. What answer can I say? No, he's not there, can I say? He's a knowledgeable, uh, educated person who knows our Christian uh, church situations. Maybe following also, maybe. Maybe one of those Hindu fundamental group members, maybe who knows what's going on. I am recalling that years ago, he's already almost about 35 years ago, this, uh, this experience. So when we are inviting others to convert themselves to Jesus and come into the church as to embrace Christianity, embrace Christian faith, what are we inviting them to? Just a membership? One more number? Or we are inviting them to share life, new life. Something is here which is not there. And we have to show. We have to show, not just formal teaching of prayers and creed and commandments and other things, which are necessary. But you have to show there is life here in Jesus Christ to which you also come, you also receive. And we who have received, like John says in his letter, what you have seen, what you have heard, what you have touched, what you have experienced, that we are sharing with you, so that you too may have a fellowship with us in the same Lord through whom we are experiencing all this. Do we have that kind of state of life, confidence in us, when we are saying, come, why don't you be a Christian, why don't you be converted, why don't you embrace Jesus Christ? We have to go into that kind of uh, personal kind of uh, self-critique uh, of our life, we know there is always a chance of finding something which need to be, which need to be addressed and changed and transformed. And this Jubilee year, Holy Father is saying, is an opportunity given to us, uh, a call given to us. Uh, called church from early centuries onwards, at every important uh, stage of history of the church, has to uh, was celebrating Jubilee years. Why you know? Stop here. Let's look back and let's look for, go forward. Review our life as a church. And renew our life of faith and move forward with a greater enthusiasm because we have a mission. We have a mission. And that mission has to continue. So we have to, in the church, everything should be good. And whatever is not so good, we need to be renewed. And Jubilee here is an occasion. In occasion, both at the parish level, the diocese level, and the universal church or national level, universal church level, in occasion, invitation is given. How do we take it? Sometimes these documents are not even read by most people among religious and priests. They know uh, something has come, which is sad. I'm saying as a bishop. I used to circulate whatever comes, I feel relevant for the priests and religious to know. I used to circulate through my new newsletter, I used to even give a commentary on, on the document and to give the text available. But many times disappointing that it is not read, things are not read and reflected. And it goes in a kind of silent, this one, and the life continues. That is why Holy Father addressed the parish priest saying, you are the gra ground reality, you priest and religious, the ground reality of the church. You have a concrete community of maybe 100 people only, 100 families only, maybe 500 families only, but you are in the concrete local church, you are the head of the church there. How is your church there under you? as a parish priest, are with you as a parish priest, are with you as a religious, as a parish community members, how are you, how is the situation, go into it, go into it, the invitation he is giving. But whether we live our faith and hope personally, 
because of which we also help our people to live their faith and their hope to make them go with a lot of joy and expectation enthusiasm as pilgrims of hope hoping one day they share the glory that is promised by god in jesus christ through jesus christ i am convinced as a leader with that conviction i am living and i am helping the community members to this punala sadukune tappudu oka brother ane vadu maharashtra bombay ayindi ma people my people want bread and butter bread and butter daily food daily needs in a high theology high matters who cares you used to say atla ganni cheyalsindi kuda cheyakunda pakkan pettestunnam that is important our social work helping people and all that but what are we really giving them as a, as a church for their life of faith for their life of hope for their life of uh, uh, as members in the church and uh, called to share in the mission of the church what are we giving them here i want to recall with the priests and religious vatican to documents uh, yeah uh, now already 50 40 minutes already 45 minutes okay i'll try to conclude because we have mass after that is this last point i conclude vatican to documents a uh, distinguishes charismatic gifts and institutional gifts by the holy spirit in the church all the baptized people are blessed with charisms and gifts of the holy spirit along with the ordained priests but ordained ministers are given institutional gifts in the sense they are ordained to minister preside over the sacramental life of the church only they are given that by ordination by laying on of hands bishops and priests they are given ministerial priesthood by virtue of which you are blessed with ministry as priests to your people is institution priesthood is an institution diaconate is an institution acolyte is an institution in the church and special ministry attached to it but I got, but that does not make you an ordained minister bishop or priest or deacon any more special than any others in the church regarding the gifts of the holy spirit charismas and gifts of the holy spirit are given to every member varied gifts or charisms are given to the people of god and holy father is saying in that letter to the parish priest also the avatican to documents we have to recognize encourage and create space to utilize these gifts and charisms are laity in the community are religious in the community in the church are given because they are part of the people of god blessed in the holy spirit with these charisms and gifts as you exercise your ordained ministry ministerial ministry as a priest they have also the same mission of proclaiming the good news of jesus christ sharing in the mission of christ as members of the laity members so how do you recognize how do you take all of them together you go along with them that's why in the very first document he enlightens us saying neither front nor back you as a priest your leadership is not to be understood that way you are with them accompanying them accompanying them so that everybody feels that we are all the church and each of us play our own role give our own share to the fulfillment of the mission that is entrusted by the lord to the church and that's what synodal church synod a missionary synodal church 
we all go together. But if you still think, if I still think I am the boss, finished. I am the boss, finished. Just all the thinking that is shared, all the theology that is shared, all that we profess, and recognition of our charisma and gifts of the our spirit to the ordinary members in the church, all that we don't believe, as if I am the boss. That needs to be, that needs to be examined. The Jubilee year, the synodal, synodal missionary synodal church. That you, along with community, you are involved in the carrying on ahead of the mission of the church. So therefore, priests and religious, and me as a bishop, who okay, retired, but I still am a bishop, and Bishop Rairal, everybody need to have this. I hope I put some reflections before you. And this is how, if when we are uh, thoughtfully, uh, seriously reflect, implications are very deep. We can take very light and throw aside. But if you take seriously, things can happen for the good of the church, good of our people, good of our mission. I wish that for you in Sri Kakulam Diocese and in your own individual life, for the joy, happiness of your own life and for the glory of God. And one day, these pilgrims, you will be each of us, you will be and I will be tangible signs of hope for others in the church. God bless you. I saw a small prayer, okay? Heavenly Father, you have blessed us with this gift of celebrating, opportunity of celebrating Jubilee year 2025 as one of the landmarks in the journey of the church. You are inviting us to appreciate your love to appreciate what you have blessed us with Jesus Christ, your Son, and what is awaiting for us as pilgrims here on the way. Bless us, each one of us. Bless every community, every Christian, so that the Jubilee really be a year of renewal in our own individual life, but as members of the church participating in communion with others in the mission, for the mission of the church. Lead us with your spirit and guide and protect us. In prayer, in the precious name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you. Your Grace, on behalf of our beloved Bishop, Most Reverend, Dr. Rairal Vijay Kumar, who celebrates his 26th ordination anniversary and 5th consecration anniversary. We thank you very sincerely for profound, inspiring and practical message that you have rendered to us. When His Lordship and myself came to invite you for this recollection and this event. In spite of your health, in spite of all the other circumstances, but still for the love of the bishop and the diocese, you lovingly accepted and you came here and you gave us a wonderful, really an inspiring as a preparation for the Jubilee year, you have given the most of the biblical and gospel values. We appreciate you for the depth that is there in the message. Let us clap for our Archbishop. And your grace, it is a great honor for the Diocese of Srikakulam, for the priests and religious who have listened to you, especially the theme of the pilgrims of hope, and also the theological virtues we explained today in a biblical fashion, faith, hope, and love, is simply uh, marvelous, I would say. And also the practicality of doing, uh, the being a witness 
in this jubilee year has been very very profound and very very in depth therefore once again from all of us here we appreciate you and also we thank you from the bottom of our hearts thank you your grace thank you and uh, pray for me okay all of you uh, pray for me and i wish some more years i am healthy and uh, use my time in a constructive way useful way because i find now all of a sudden i don't know what to do with my time like some some, some part of the day some part of the week i'm trying to plan my time so that i can still contribute to the church uh, to the people's life so please continue to pray for me and for my good health god bless you and i assure my prayers for bishwarala and all of you today and uh, in the coming days god bless you <laughs>